Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial I'm going to teach you how to paint this gorgeous love heart valentine beach scene and I'm going to teach you how to use colours to create shadows and highlights, how to mix tones to create a blurry background so you can paint this gorgeous beautiful acrylic painting here. So let's get into it. Now the colours you will need for today's tutorial are blue, white, yellow, orange, red, purple, brown and black. And please have a hairdryer if you've got it just to dry your work in sections of the video. Now here I have an 8x10 inch canvas that I've painted burnt sienna and I've used chalk to create a lovely heart shape. I thought I'd come up with a nice Valentine's Day uh, painting that would be nice for everyone that's not too hard. So we've drawn a nice sun in the middle and that's going to create this gorgeous heart shape and we're going to have some heat coming out of that. We're going to have a reflection and we're going to get darker either side and we're going to have some sand here. So we're going to have the sky at the top lots of water in the middle and the sand at the bottom and we're going to create a silhouette that will hopefully make a lovely Valentine's Day heart. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to block the painting in and all I'm going to do is create a really nice sand tone. Now all it is is brown, some blue and some white and a little bit of yellow and that should give you this lovely sand colour. I have it a bit pre-mixed because as I always say I'm a bit lazy, I do this every day. So I have this tone pre-mixed. But all it is is those colours put together. And it should make this lovely sort of tan colour. Now to create a warm grey, all you do is take some black and some orange. And a little bit of purple and a little bit of blue and some white. So if you take some purple, a tiny bit of blue and lots of white and we should have the same colour that I've got pre-mixed. Now all what we want to do is just darken up the corners like usual. So all we've done is we've created a tan colour and a warm grey and all I'm going to do is just put a bit of the tan colour at the top and that should create just sort of the illusion of some sand. Now as I say, just like always, we're just going to block everything in. So we're going to put some white for our sun and we're just going to put some light yellow around it. So just add a little bit of yellow and white around your sun and just gradually add more yellow as you get around. And what we're just trying to do is we're just trying to block everything in. We're going to leave the hands till a bit later, but we're just going to try to block in the background. Now, as the sun is so hot like usual, it's going to have the most bright light around it. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to mirror the sun on the water. So all we're going to do is create straight lines going down and we're just going to use some of that yellowy white, so yellow and white. We're just going to come straight down and we're just going to get darker as we go along. So I'm going to put some white first in the middle. So don't worry as I say if it's scruffy, we just want to block it all in. And then as the sunlight gets a bit darker, we want to add a little bit more orange. So just add a little bit of orange so you get this nice sort of golden yellow. So just add a little bit of orange to your yellow. Not too much because orange is very overpowering, but just enough so you get a nice golden yellow. And we're just going to go straight down again. And what we're trying to do is we're just trying to mirror the colours of the sky into our sea below. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit more heat, so a little bit more orange, still plenty of yellow. We don't want it too orange and we're just going to come straight down. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a nice gradient between white into yellow into orange. And this is going to create the illusion of hot as the um, heat from the sun is shining down onto that water. And it will get cooler as it gets further out. So how are we going to make it cooler? Well, remember what I've been saying, purple and white, purple and blue are the cooler tones. So we've done some hot tones in yellow and orange. We want to create a cool tone. So we're going to mix some purple and white together and create a nice sort of lavender tone here. And we're going to add a little bit of orange to it just to give it a little bit of heat. So we've got purple, lots of white and some orange. And we're just going to create this lovely sort of warm lavender tone. 
And what that is, is as the water is getting cooler from that sunlight, it's just getting a little bit darker and it's getting more purpley and more blue. So all we're going to do is just while we've got that lovely lavender colour, we're just going to block in the sky. Now anyone who's watched my previous tutorials, the reason we use purple and white is because it's a really good to uh, tone between yellows and blues. You can't have a jump to yellow to blue, it would create green. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take some of that yellowy orange that we had and we're just going to do the base of our horizon just because that's going to be all nice and warm where the sunlight is hitting it. And what the purple and white does is when we get to blue right in a minute it's just a not so harsh jump. So what I'm doing is just getting a bit cooler so it's just purple and white, no orange in it now. And then what we're going to do is just do the same here. So as the sky gets cooler, as that heat source is getting further away from it, the, s the temperature is cooling, so the colour is cooling. So if you just think of it like that, it's just mirroring the water and the sky. Now we're going to take some blue and lots and lots of white to create this lovely tone here. And so all it is is a pastel blue, so just some blue and lots and lots and lots of white. And we're going to darken up our corners. So hopefully we've got a nice gradient where that purple and white in the middle blends into the warm yellowy orange. It hasn't got such a big jump between blues and yellows. That purpley and white colour, that lavender colour is a really good bridge tone that just bridges the sky together and doesn't make it look so harsh. And we're going to use that same colour to do this trick here. And as I say, don't worry if it's all streaky, don't worry, we're going to neaten every single thing up. It's just to more to teach you how to go from hot to colds, just so your work looks realistic. So we're going to get cooler now as we're going out. So we're going to get some purple and some blue, tiny dot of black, and just create this lovely purpley blue here. And we're just going to fill in these corners of our sea. So even though it's a bit streaky, it's quite streaky, it's okay. It's just to show you how to go from the hot in the middle to the cool at the sides. And as we add the detail over the top, and we just blend these tones together here, it should look like the temperature is sort of cooling the further out we go. Now when you're happy with your work, please dry it with a hairdryer because we're going to add a second layer of paint and we're just going to neaten every single thing up and just make everything look a lot prettier now. So all we're doing is we're adding some Naples yellow which is just yellow and lots and lots and lots of white and we're just reapplying bright yellow now and you can see just from adding a second layer of paint just how prettier and how less streaky you can just blend the tones into one another while it's wet and just reapply everything. We're just going to neaten every single thing up. So now we know where everything is, we're just going to do the exact same technique. So all we're going to do is add a little bit of orange just to create this lovely sort of golden yellow. And we're just going to go around the bottom of our fingers of our heart shape. Now we'll probably lighten this area up here, so we'll add some plenty of white to our yellow, we'll just make it a bit lighter, but just while we're neating it all up, we just want to make it look pretty, and we're going to mirror it in the water. So you can see now, just by adding the second layer, look how clean that paint looks compared to how scruffy it looks beneath and all I'm doing is I'm letting the paint run out and I'm just sort of using the same shade so whatever shade I'm coming down with I'm just going to go onto the beach and I'm just going to go straight down with the um, more golden yellow which has a little bit of orange in it and I'm just going to come straight down and try to blend it into the previous tone so as you can see by just sort of blending it gently while it's wet. I'm just going to put some white and yellow in the middle. So all I'm doing is I'm using a round headed brush. 
I'm just gently applying pressure, just adding a little bit more orange now to my yellow. And I'm just going down with the same trick. I'm just blending it into the previous tone. So a little bit more heat, just by adding some orange. So look, should have a nice blend now. So let's just put some white down the middle just to make it stand out a bit more. So we're going to do the same with our warmer purple. So we're going to get some orange, some purple and white to create that lovely sort of hot peachy lavender tone. So we're just going to blend that in again. So as I say, just a round headed brush I'm using and I'm just gently applying pressure and I'm just gently blending it into the previous tone. And while I've got the same tone, as I say, I'm just going down onto the sand and I'm just letting the brush sort of let the paint run out on the brush and just create little squiggles just to create the illusion of sort of washed up um, sort of shimmer on the beach sand so all we're going to do is we're going to add some purple and white to that mix so just a bit more purple and white so we're getting cooler as we go across and we're just trying to blend all the tones together just to make them look a little bit less streaky but don't worry if they're still a little streaky because we're going to put our lovely gorgeous um, light effect on later but it's just to create a nice transition on the underpainting first so those lovely um, circles that we're going to do for our light effect later stand out now what I'm doing I'm just going sideways and I'm just just creating the illusion of waves by just going across with my brush with that purple and white now we don't want to create a lot of detail because when we do the light effect we want it to look like the water is quite far off into the distance so we can do these lovely circles and create the light effect so again all I'm using is my round headed brush and I've just got some yellow a tiny bit of orange sorry some white a tiny bit of orange and some purple I'm just creating the illusion of waves and hopefully it's starting to blend those tones at the same time and I'm just going to take some blue and lots and lots of white and I'm just doing the same trick because as I say we're getting cooler as we're getting further away from that sun so I'm just doing the exact same trick and it should start to blend and then last but not least we're going to take some blue some purple and lots of white to create this lovely bluey purpley tone and as i say we're just trying to create the illusion of waves sort of sea froth coming up to the shore but we don't want to create too much detail because we want it to look blurry and look far away so in all fairness we want it to look quite scruffy we want it to look um, not very detailed at all because if we add some detail it will bring the painting forward it will bring the water forward which we don't want to do so we're just having very little paint and just um, using your brush or using your fingers even like me we just want to sort of blend the two tones together just try to cover up as much of that burnt sienna background as we can and just make it look nice and pretty now we're going to take some of the um, yellow and white and we're just going to go around our hands and do the sky. So just now we've neatened up the water a bit, we're going to neaten up the sky. So yellow and lots of whites will create this Naples yellow tone. And all we want to do is go down to the horizon because the light sort of shines upwards. If you imagine it gets darker as we go up. So we're going to start with the lightest colour. And then we're going to do that trick with the previous tone we had, which was a little bit of orange, a little bit of purple and lots and lots of white to create this lovely warm sort of peach lavender tone. So it blends between the yellow and the purple we're going to put on next. So still quite warm because it's got a bit of purple and it's gradually getting cooler. And then we're going to add purple to lots and lots of white to create a lovely lavender colour. So it's gradually getting cooler as it's going upwards towards those corners of our canvas. And then we're going to get the blue and lots and lots and lots of white to just frame it. Now, 
As I've said lots and lots of times, if you need to do a second layer like I did, just dry it with a hairdryer and just do the exact same trick once dry. Because if your work is a bit streaky, the great thing about acrylics is you can just dry them really quick with a hairdryer and just clean your brush and just go over the top and just use the exact same tones just to make it less streaky. And by darkening up our corners, what we're hopefully doing, just like all the previous tutorials, we're hopefully drawing your eyes into that central sun, into that gorgeous heart um, shape that we've got going with the hands. And hopefully it gets the viewer to get lost right down the middle into the scene. So as I say, just take your time, just rework areas that you have to. So just getting hotter as we go down or getting cooler as you get up whatever way is easier for you so you can start at the bottom of the horizon and work your way up or you can start at the top of the canvas and work your way down so we're just trying to get lighter as we work our way down so fully now we've got a second coat on our sky it just blends a bit better and just looks a bit more realistic and a bit more natural you don't notice the the tones blending into one another it just looks seamless it just looks like a realistic sky so that looks a lot better and it looks a bit more realistic so i'm going to take some pure white and just going to put a big blob for my sun so it's nice and prominent and i know where it's going to be and i'm just going to get some lighting up just where my heart the top of my heart is because where the fingers are going to be the lighter it is the more they're going to stand out so i'm just trying to match it with the um, background sky so i'm just making it a little bit less harsh by just adding some yellow and white it's a very pastel yellowy white just to make the sky look a bit nicer and just kind of match by adding some yellow just around the sun there just adding some heat back, but not too much. So just to make that tone, you just use yellow, white, and a little bit of orange. And you should get this lovely golden yellow. It's a really pretty tone. It just looks like the ferocious heat coming out of the sun. And when we put our silhouette of our hands in, it should look gorgeous. It should um, really, really um, make the sun stand out. So I'm just going to get some pure white. So I'm just going to go down the middle, just straight down onto the sand, just to make it look really, really like a reflection going straight down. And I'm just going to use some yellow and white just to soften it at the edges. There we go. Easy peasy. And the same with my bright yellow. Just go straight down and onto the sand. I just want to try to get a mirror effect. That could be all the wet sand that the light is just refracting against. And it's just hitting that wet sand. Same with that yellowy orange. So it's just putting on little layers, nothing hard. You're just trying to mirror everything. So just by adding more heat, you just add more orange, come straight down, just onto the sand. There we go. Whee! So hopefully it's all starting to match up now with our sand and our water. So it's looking like a reflection down. So the light is looking like it's blending in and it's coming down onto that lovely sand. So we're going to take some purple, lots and lots of white and some orange and we're just going to come straight down so that's the warm lavender because it's still got a little hint of orange into it we're just going to blend the tones together and then i'm just going to get some of the purple and lots and lots and lots of white so it's getting a bit cooler now it's got no orange in it i'm just coming down it should be matching onto my sand so that wet sand is showing up all that reflection of the sun and then we've got blue tiny bit of purple and lots and lots and lots of white a really cool tone now in the, this corner and the same 
on the opposite corner and that should all blend together now quite nicely so I'm really liking the gradient on that, I'm really liking the blending, I'm really liking all that effect so let's start with the hands so we're going to create our really lovely warm heart so we want to use red because the heat from the sun is going to be coming through our heart shaped hands we want the, to create a heat effect so how are we going to do that we're going to use really really warm tones so the warm tones are yellow orange and red so what we're going to do is we're going to use bright red and just go round and create this gorgeous heart shape on our hands so again just like the previous blocking in don't worry if it's streaky but just try to cover up as much of that burnt sienna around that heart shape so again we're going to get cooler as we go out so the light source is going to get darker as it gets more into a silhouette so we're going to create this lovely purple which is just lots and lots of red and some bright blue mixed together to create this lovely bright purple so anyone who's got bright purple or if you haven't just mix some bright red with bright blue and you should get this lovely bright purple and again just like our sky we don't want to have too much of a jump between the hots and the colds and what this purple does is it's a really really good bridge tone between the dark silhouettes that we're going to um, create in a minute and the warm heat from the sun around our heart shape so I'm going to take some blue and mix it with black so blue and black to create a Prussian blue which is just a very dark blue which is just blue and lots of black so plenty of blue and a little bit of black and we should create this lovely really dark blue tone and all I'm going to do is just outline our hands just creating some knuckles here and just going down and again don't worry if it's a bit scruffy we can neaten up the sky around the hands later but we just want a clear definition of our hands just to create the silhouette effect so just a nice outline so blue and black create this lovely Prussian blue it's called but you can make it yourself just blue and black and we just want to go and outline our lovely hands so just try to outline it the best you can but don't worry if it's scruffy because we're going to block it all in with the same color in a minute let's get that Prussian blue so blue and black and let's just start blocking in our lovely hands and arms and try to create a silhouette effect so don't worry if you go over the purple we just want to go right around the outline because we can put in the heat effect back in a minute so just try to block it in just try to cover all the burnt sienna with that really dark blue as I say don't worry if it's streaky because we can just rework it in a minute but now we've got a nice outline what that does is gives us a nice silhouette effect and then we can put the heat back in a minute with the purple and the red so as I say don't worry if it's streaky we can just go over the top as it dries you can just reapply the paint over it again so look we just go over it again just so it's not as streaky just by having a second layer of the paint just gets rid of all that burnt sienna and all those streaks that were shining through so just try to cover up as much as you can and cause that dark blue when we reapply the purple and the red we can even outline it with a bit of black and because that dark blue isn't totally black it won't look too harsh it will look more realistic as we don't want to use all black because if you use all black it just looks a bit cartoony so by using this really really dark blue we can just trick the eyes again and just make it look more like a silhouette 
Okay, so we're going to take some orange and we're just going to go around the edges of our thumbs and the hands. And what we're trying to do is we're just trying to create sort of like the wrinkles you have on your hands. If you make that sort of shape, the heart shape, you get sort of little um, wrinkles in your hands where the bits of your fingers sort of come together. So all we're doing is we're just trying to sort of imply them with a bit of orange. So some bright orange. And also by outlining the heart shape, it's just going to again just make it look a bit more realistic. So all it is is just bright orange and we're just going to go around our heart. Just think of it as an outline. Just go right around the edge. And that's the heat that's coming off the sun sort of hitting onto your fingertips and the light is sort of cascading around your fingertips and going through the gaps. And then we're going to take some of that really bright red and we're just going to go around that orange. So what we're doing, we're just putting the light back now onto our hands and that's all the sort of light seeping through the fingertips and going around into the silhouette. So what I'm taking is some bright red and I'm just smearing that into that dark blue. So, and then some of that bright purple again. And what that bright purple should do is just merge into that blue and just create a nice transition between the, the cooler tone of the blue and the really warm bright red and orange. And that purple sort of acts as an in-between, like a bouncer, it sort of kind of bridges the two together. And it just doesn't look as harsh. And it kind of looks like the light is sort of shining out. And you can put in things like knuckles and things. As I say, I don't want to go too detailed, but I'm just putting in some fingers. Just sort of the line where the light would be coming through for the fingers. So this is a really easy technique. You can use this on anything. So if you're doing, say, a silhouette of anything you want you can use the exact same technique that I'm using here where you do the really dark bluey black and you use things like red oranges and purples to create a light effect so it's all it is it's just adding more heat on areas so around our heart shape we want to add lots and lots of heat and it will get cooler as it goes around and it will just give this lovely sort of natural look but as I say, you can use this for things like trees, you can use this for buildings, same technique, same colours. It's a really, really good trick. We recently did a tropical beach scene that we used this on a palm tree, if you remember. It's the same trick by using hots and colds. It just tricks your eye and just makes it look really, really realistic through the colours. So by just brightening up our heart shape, it's just making it look really really glowing so it looks like that heat is just glowing through the fingertips and it's such an easy technique as I say you can do this with, it looks really pretty in things like tree lines cliffs buildings even silhouettes of people you can do this with so it's a really really nice trick to do it's a fantastic tip that we're giving you and you can apply it to your own artwork So what I'm doing, I'm just tipping the paintbrush sideways and it's got very little paint and I'm just sort of scraping it to the canvas just so it looks like that light is just sort of blurring, it's just smudging it into the purple. Now I'm going to take some bright yellow and just mix it with a little bit of orange to create a, and a little bit of red just to create this really really bright orange and I'm just going to go highlight again. Now we've put that red back in, I just want to put some a little bit of detail just again with those creases with your fingers just to really show where the light is hitting and glowing and going around our heart shape so it's going to be a strange valentine's for a lot of people in london here we're still in lockdown we're probably going to be locked down for another month just with the high cases of covid so unfortunately i can't take my beautiful wife out for a romantic evening i can't take her out to see 
a movie or uh, go to a nice restaurant or anything so looks like a takeaway for murray <laughs> and his wife <laughs> but um yeah it's just such a shame i'm missing going out i don't know about everyone else but the great thing with these painting tutorials hopefully they will be cheering you up hopefully they will um getting you to focus on things and just enjoy your time painting, relaxing instead. You could be learning the craft with all this extra time that you have. So it's a great way to learn. So what I'm doing, I'm just taking a fine liner and I'm just taking some jet black and I'm just going around my arms and I'm just darkening up the furthest corners of them. So it's that, just some jet black, a tiny bit of that previous tone, that darky bluey black. I'm just mixing them together and I just want to create a really really dark tone that goes around it just outlines my arms just to make them look really really prominent against the background so by just outlining it with the black we've still got that dark bluey tone but just that nice outline what it does it just gives a clear definition between the background and the arms but as I say I don't want to cover the whole hands in black because I think if you did the whole thing in black it would just look a bit too cartoony hopefully the camera's picking it up that it's still very dark blue but by just going around the edges just things like the knuckles and just making a clear definition what it should be doing is just making it look a bit more realistic now as I say we've got gaps between the sky and the knuckles where obviously we were roughing it in and we'll go around and we'll neaten that up in a minute but it's just to make our hands just look a bit more realistic and just give them a clear definition so it's all beginning to take shape it's starting to look really really nice we've got this lovely light effect our hands are starting to look great that heart shape is looking really really pretty so we're getting there it's starting to look really really nice already And a lot of art, like I keep saying to you, is just taking your time, relaxing, knowing that it all comes together at the end, being patient. So what we're going to do is we're going to dry it. And the reason we're going to dry it is because we've just painted a very dark tone with that black and that dark blue, as we're just going to neaten up just areas of the canvas that we've missed with things like the yellow and the sky tone and the sea. We don't want it to mix with the black and we get a horrible smudgy tone. So all I'm doing, I'm just mixing the previous colors that we used before for the sky. So that was that warm lavender, that orange, purple, and lots and lots of white. And I'm just going to go around my hands, but I'm making sure they're dry because as I say, I don't want to mix black with the sky tone and get a horrible smudge with, um, with the black because the black tone is so um, domineering. It would just kill the sky. So just make sure it's dry just before you do anything, please. So just like before, I'm just taking some white and yellow to create a, a nice Naples yellow. I'm just going to go around my hands with a fine liner and just get all that bits of burnt sienna that are shining through. So this again, this is one of the reasons I paint my canvas a dark tone and not just leave it white so I can see all the bits that I've missed. Um, I know a lot of people, it's probably the most asked question on my YouTube, is why do you paint your canvases burnt sienna? Well, this is the reason. It's simply so I can see where the streaks, where I've missed areas, and if that canvas was white, it wouldn't show up as, um, it wouldn't be so blatant to me. I wouldn't notice as much. So what I try to do is paint it that really bright burnt sienna, that sort of orangey brown tone, and then I can tell where I've missed and I can just rework areas. So as I say, just take your time, just try to get it as nice and reworked in areas as you can. Hopefully you're finding all these videos really, really helpful. As I say, I've got plenty of painting tutorials now. I'm gonna start adding a painting tutorial every single week or two now. 
um, until I all the exhibitions and all the galleries and art fairs are open so I'm really really trying to um, create more tutorials for you and I think because I've enjoyed them so much while I've been making them while I've had this free time I think I'm just going to continue so I think what I'm going to do is just keep doing all these tutorials for everyone so all I'm doing here I'm just getting the purple and blue like before and I'm just drawing in the waves yeah, so I'm going to hopefully continue doing these tutorials, so please like and subscribe if you haven't already, so more artists can hopefully see these tutorials, as the more views and the more subscribers we get, and we all grow together, hopefully more artists um, we can help. So again, just please dry your painting, so it's really, really nice and dry just before you put any tape on it, because all we're going to do is we're just going to... Um, just again just cover up any bits of our um, sea or any bits of the canvas that we've missed and we're just going to kind of neaten everything up Now my tape looks really wonky I don't think it was that wonky I think because the camera and my canvas is at a slight angle it looks wonky like I don't drink so I'm not drunk <laughs> but it does look very wonky hey ho <laughs> Now, I made a boo-boo here, look, I didn't, I removed my tape way too quick and I had so much water on my brush. But look, this is the great thing about acrylics, if your background is dry, this is why I insist on you drying your areas of your work before moving on a stage, you can just use a baby wipe and literally just neaten it up, just like I'm doing here. So that's why I keep saying to you to use a hairdryer, because if you use a hairdryer, if you ever make a mistake, think of it as, um, you're doing sections of the painting well you don't have to go f really far back you just have to just um, obviously just use baby wipe and just paint over it so by drying your work in stages it really really does help it's kind of like a little insurance policy that you've done a section you've dried it onto the next section you've done a section you've dried it you onto the next section and as I say if the canvas is dry you shouldn't get any smudges you can't um, by accident I tell you what I do all the time when I paint in oils I put my hand let's like, see my big hand there I put my chubby hand into the oil paints and then I drag it across the painting so by drying areas of your work what it really does is just stop things like mistakes and smears and smudges happening so look same technique all we're doing is we're making the horizon and around the light source lighter so now we're going to do this blurry background effect now because we've got this lovely underpainting all we're going to do is create circles on top of it but we're going to use the same tones as what's underneath so the first thing we're going to do is take jet white so some titanium white and we're going to create all different size circles so see how it works all i'm doing is i'm just creating little bubbles so little circles of bright white now because we've got a gap in the underpainting what it should do when we match all the same tones it should look really realistic and it should look like light reflecting in the background and push our background back to make it look really realistic and it's a really easy trick so just like the hands we can use this trick on all different types of artwork so in the future you can use this for all different types of scenes so look all we're doing now we're doing bright yellow but we're doing the same technique we're just doing different size little circles so look some big some small and we're just putting them at different angles and it kind of looks like if you ever see like a professional photo just sort of the water sparkles so it's the light sort of sparkling and how the lens sort of captures it and it gives this really nice realistic look which is such an easy technique to do but again if you have the underpainting and the nice transitions beneath what it does it just again just looks really realistic and all this as i say it's just little stages but by adding the detail on the top just gets it better and better more realistic and more realistic so we're going to add a little bit of orange now so just like we did in the previous color we just add a little bit more heat and we're just going to do the same thing so just same different size circles so again just try to mix them up try to put them at different angles try to just do them randomly and what it should do is then create a really nice mixture between the tones 
so just get a little bit more orange as we go out still got a bit of yellow in into it but it's already look it's starting to work it's already starting to look really cool that middle bit looks fantastic and it's so easy this is what I keep saying to you it's really really easy once you know how so I'm just getting a bit more orange now so same technique just different size circles but leaving some of that underpainting to shine through just leaving some gaps and kind of little overlaps on some of the circles it's a bit more orange just because we're getting further out so again it's just patience it, ooh, that's too dark that's way too dark put too much orange bad Murray <laughs> baby wipe quick emergency baby wipe I think I've gone off camera to find one where is one where is a baby wipe a oh, few there we go <laughs> thank god for baby wipes so there we go because the painting was dry underneath we could just wipe away that one that we made a mistake at so baby wipes kitchen roll is great to have on hand just in case you make a mistake so we're gonna make that warm lavender tone again so it was just purple bit of orange and lots of white and we get this lovely warm lavender tone and we're just going to do the same circle technique so all just different sizes just again leaving some of the underpainting to shine through just leaving gaps just creating different size circles some overlapping some not so again it's just all patience it's just slowly building it up all these little tricks as I keep teaching you you can all apply them to your own artwork by learning all these tricks and tips even the baby wipe tip <laughs> for mistakes they all come in really really handy okay so we're going to get some cooler lavender so just purple and white now so plenty of white and a little dot of purple and again we're just creating circles and they're just going to be the cooler brighter circles We're just going to try and match that on the opposite side. So if you just think whatever you do on one side, you want to match on the other side. Same with the sky. So whatever's in the sky, you want to kind of match the tones on the sea or on your terrain. So say we had a red sky, we would have a ready sea. And it's that simple. You just want to kind of think of it like a mirror. That whatever you do on one side, you want to do on the other opposite side. There we go. Just always remember, acrylics dry a bit darker. So as we're going along in the paint, you can notice sometimes at the end when you see the finished painting, it looks a little bit darker. The woods tutorial that we did um, last, for example, it looks so much better at the end simply because all the dark tones dry very dark and all the bright lights with the light effect look really, really um, great contrast against it because as I say acrylics dry a lot darker so look it's really starting to take shape so we're gonna get some purple and white and we're just gonna do some more circles just build it up now it's now it's drying in places we can just go over certain circles just make them a little bit more brighter by adding a second layer same tone just going over them say twice just or just emphasizing some so as I say it's just real easy technique it's not hard it's just having a bit of patience just to, this whole thing with painting it's just all doing layers when you're happy with a layer move on to the next stage just keep building it up just till you're happy with every single layer so look just by going over a few just redoing a few and just doing some little ones just making it look pretty it's starting to look like sparkles so hopefully our beach our nice sunset and that gorgeous sun and the mixture with our hearts all our techniques are coming together so last but not least we're going to do blue and white because even cooler so we're going to take the same color that's in our top corners of our painting which was blue and lots and lots of white and we're going to make the coolest little bubbles so again just doing different sizes 
Just trying to randomly place where they should be. Some nice, some bright, some a bit less. So just take your time, just enjoy it. So some are just redoing, just making them, just overlapping, just building them up. It's such a cool technique, it really is, this blurry background. I should do it more, I really enjoy it. So I'm going to get a little bit darker blue and a bit of purple. So just less white really. So a bit more blue, less white, and a little bit of purple just to make it really cool. And I'm just going to do the coolest of circles, just in these far corners, because they're obviously getting the least amount of light. And they're the coolest in tone because they're the furthest away from the sun. So as I say, just knowing your hots and colds, knowing your tones can really do the work for you. Let's look at that. What a cool effect. That was easy. That was so cool. So let's just touch up the hands a little bit. Where well, we painted our sky back on, I'm just going to outline my hands again, just with that black, just to make them just look a bit neater because obviously we just did the sky so that's what I'm saying all it is is just going back and forth and just noticing areas that just need a little bit of TLC and just reworking it so as I say always take your time always just get comfortable with your artwork never try to rush it only you will know when you're happy with it and it's finished so if you have to go on around areas and just rework it there's nothing wrong with that it's a sign of a good artist if you're a perfectionist and you're going back to your work and you're just tinkering with things and changing things we all do it i'm telling you now even when i've had a painting in an exhibition i'm still sitting there noticing things that i don't like in it <laughs> it's a sign of a good artist right so i'm going to take some really bright red now and we're going to really emphasize our heart seeing it is a valentine's day heart i want it to look really like a heart and i want it to stand out and i want that heat effect to look really radiant so i'm going to use some really really bright red here and just so i've got a nice definition with the hands and it gives it a nice glow oh it's looking so pretty it's starting to look like a heart i think this is quite romantic i think it's a nice it's a nice tutorial I'm just going to make my sun a bit whiter, just so it's a bit brighter. So as I say, we're just knitting everything up. As I say, the painting always comes together right at the end. So just mixing some yellow and white, just a little bit lighter tone. I'm just going around my sun, just to make it look like it's got a sort of a glow effect in the sky. So we're just using yellow and white. sun back in just to make it nice and bright with that white there we go easy peasy and again just getting some of that bright yellow just like what's underneath as I say we want it to match we're just going to go around our hands So I'm just going to get some orange and yellow. Just really emphasize these sort of grooves in the hand. Just the outline. And hopefully with that really bright red now, it just makes it stand out more. Sometimes with acrylics, with the bright colours, you just do need to give them two layers just because 
they um, dry as I say a bit dark so sometimes you just got to give them a second layer and you can get really pungent colors just using the same tone so all we're doing is taking some of that yellowy gold color that we had before and we're just doing the exact same trick so we're just going round our fingertips round our hand round the heart again just try and trick the eyes by just creating light and I'm just gonna get some white and again just create sort of those circle effects just so it sort of matches that looks good doesn't it looks like it's all matching so I'm gonna get some of that warm grey so remember that was orange black and a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of um, purple and lots of white to create this warm grey and we just go darken up our corners like always so we draw the viewers eyes into the middle and I'm gonna create some darker tones so I'm just gonna add a little bit more black to it now as I say I don't want to do very much detail because I want the background to look like it's far away hence the fact we've got that lovely sort of um, light effect so what I'm doing I'm creating this bluey grey which is blue black and purple and lots and lots of white and I'm just using a round-headed brush and hardly any paint there's hardly any on it and I'm just trying to sort of scrape it along the canvas we're just going to add some orange to the mix because in the middle it's going to be a bit warmer to create sort of a browny sort of pumpkin-y colour and what I'm trying to do is try to give the impression of some waves but by using a dry brush and by just barely touching the canvas and just sort of scraping it against the canvas I don't want to add any detail so I'm just scraping it to imply where the sort of water um, hits the shore and sort of some waves because I don't want to add detail because if I add detail the light effect won't look realistic because it won't look like it's far off into the distance so that look that looks really good so last to finish it off we're gonna get some yellow and lots and lots of white and create a really bright yellow and we're just gonna outline our hands just to give it really so the, the light is just hitting the surface of those hands and just beaming it off it to create our heart so again just try to outline it the best you can don't worry so much if you go around the edges it will kind of look like the light is bending around the fingertips so just try to mix a really really bright white and yellow so it should really emphasize those that heart shape our little valentine shape wow that's looking beautiful our beach is looking good our sunset's looking good our heart is looking good our hands are looking good we're looking good this is great so i'm just getting some of that orange Again, I'm just trying to create the impression of heat coming up around those fingertips. Just hitting the tops of those fingers. just getting the ready purple color so I've just put some of that purple that we were using earlier and I've just put a tiny bit of red into it and I'm just applying where things like my knuckles would be so I'm just implying where my fingertips would be just again doing the same technique just sort of lines that you have on your thumb and your fingers those sort of creases So let's spend in two minutes just doing some extra creases and stuff just gives a little added detail again just putting some of that warm orange just where you're having some bits of light spill over the fingertips so again same technique just blurring it in with a really dry brush just 
turning it sideways and just scraping it against the canvas just to soften up the edges. But I think she's looking incredible. I think she's finished. So I'm going to sign her. So look, we've learned all these different tricks today. We've made this gorgeous painting. We've got this lovely light effect where we've got the sun. And we've got that lovely heart shape and how it's beaming out and it's creating this great heat to create our heart shape. You've learned how to do a silhouette. You've learned how to darken your corners so we can sign it in the left hand corner and you've learned how to do these wonderful sort of blurry background light effect how to create the underpainting for things like the sky and the water how to use hot tones and cool tones and how to create a beautiful painting so thank you so much for watching this tutorial we have plenty of tutorials here on my channel M Stuart paintings so thank you so much um, please like and subscribe so we can get the tutorials out to more artists and I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you very very much my name is Murray if you have any questions please put them in the comments below and the next video should be on now so please take care of yourself guys and goodbye